Hi guys, and welcome back to another Render Tip Tuesdays. Since it's getting colder outside, I thought we are going to take a look at a snowball texture out of um, completely procedural textures in Keyshot. So we only need a spherical object and the material graph. So I think this is gonna be a really fun one. I hope you enjoy it. Let's jump into Keyshot. All right, here in Keyshot, I have set up a really simple scene. We have a background image, um, as you can see here. We have the standard environment. We want to have a really light, bright environment. So I just took um, the standard Keyshot environment. And I have added a sphere. You can do that by going to Edit, Add Geometry, and choosing the sphere object. In order for you to follow along, I have set the scale to 100 millimeters. So we have our nice scale to work with. So for this tutorial, we are going to take advantage of the material graph inside Keyshot. This is going to be a really good practice for the material graph. Double click on the sphere itself and we have the standard sphere material here. And we are going to jump into the material graph itself here. And this new window will pop up and we are going to resize it in such a way that we can see the outcome. Let's move it down a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And now we can see that we have uh, the material, which is a diffuse material, is which is connected to the surface node of the actual sphere. And we have a second and a third option here as well, which is geometry and label. And we will take advantage of the geometry node here. So to change our geometry itself, right click into this area, go to textures and click on noise texture. So this will be the first kind of irregularity that we want to add to the snowball. Double click the noise texture and go to preview color, or you can click also C on your keyboard. Go to scale, or change it to 200 to um, have really soft, um, indents and irregularities. So to see the result, we have to go right click again, go to geometry and choose a displace node. So this displacement node will actually change the geometry. We now have to connect the noise texture to the input here and go from the displacement to the geometry input of the sphere itself. Now you can go and un check the preview color, and we now have to change the settings of the displacement itself. So double click on the displacement node, and we are going to change it to 15 millimeter displacement and offset of one. And the triangle size can be as low as 0 0.1. Uh, and just leave the, the rest as is for now. So now we can go and execute this geometry node and if you see those weird artifacts appearing, we can get rid of this really easily. So go to the scene window here and right click on the sphere itself and go to retessellate. This will open a new window. We'll uh, choose tessellate and here you can see the issue. Basically, we, we don't have enough triangles to display the um, displacement. We are going to get go a little bit higher, so it's around um, 0 0.5. It's usually um, okay. And as you can see, we now have a lot more triangles to work with. So apply, and we have to now double click again, go to the material graph and execute the geometry nodes again. So now these artifacts are gone. So this is the first uh, displacement material that we um, need. And now we need a second one. So right click in go to textures and I'll choose a granite um, texture, which is really nice because it has really irregular um, black and white um, shades. So double click that one, go to the preview color again and we're gonna change the color itself to um, white. So we only have black and white. And now I'm going to change the um, scale of the granite to um, around 400. I think that looks good to give the second layer of irregularities to the snowball. 
So that's good, but now we have to add it to the displacement node. So as you can see, we don't have a second input, but we can circumnavigate that problem. So go to this um, blue line, and when it's highlighted, go right-click to Utilities and choose a color composite. So this lets us choose two textures and combine them. So we can now take the granite and plug it into the background of the color composite. And now we have to uncheck preview color, double click the color composite. Now we can hit C on the keyboard again. And as you can see, we only see the noise texture here. So we don't see the granite yet. But as soon as we change the blend mode to multiply, we can see the granite and the noise texture combined in here. So that's fine for now. We can uncheck the preview color and execute the geometry nodes again. And as soon as we hit that, um, we can see our snowball is taking shape. We have now a much more irregular areas here with more shadows. And this is going to look really realistic in the end. So now for the um, third layer, we need to add a new color composite again. So right-click Utilities, go to Color Composite again, and this lets us add a new texture. I'm going to right-click the granite and go to Duplicate. Double-click it and make sure that you unsync this texture. Otherwise, the two granites or the, all the textures will be synced, so the changes will be made all over, but we actually want to have a difference here. So I'm going to go down with the scale about um, 100. And actually, let's preview the color again. So this is my third layer of textures, which I'm going to add to the displacement. So uncheck preview color again, plug this new granite texture into the background of this color composite, double click. And now we are going to change this blend mode to screen. So we want to make it a little bit brighter so we don't have such a dark um, texture. We want to have it evenly. And also, I want to have this granite texture not as a huge impact as the other two. So those two textures should change the displacement more than this one. So this one just adds a little bit of um, texture here. So in order to do this, we can go to the color composite and change the background alpha instead of one to around 0. Point, let's say 0. 0.2. So as you can see, this new granite will actually have less um, opacity and therefore is going to change the displacement not as much. So uncheck the preview color again and let's rerun the geometry nodes. And this is fine for me. You can uh, play around with the height of this granite or let's say the impact that this new texture has, but I think I'll leave it for now. And now for the last step, we are going to take another color composite. So right click again, choose color composite. And now the last texture that we need is a fractal noise. So double click that one, hit C on the keyboard again, or preview color here. And this is going to add these um, ice crystals that we want on that snowball. And for the scale, I'm going to have a scale of one millimeter at this scale here. Uh, you have to choose on your own, but, I, but you want to have a really small, um, fine texture here. And we are going to plug this one into the background of this new color composite. So uncheck the preview color double click the color composite and hit C again to see the result. We're going to change the blend mode here to overlay. And also don't forget to change the background alpha to a much lower number. So I'm going for 0 0.1. And this basically adds this noise to the texture. So you can see this really small change, but this is going to give us this extra detail in the final material. So now uncheck preview color again and rerun the geometry nodes. All right, so I let this um, sit here for a minute. And if you don't see this or a similar result here, you can click um, H on your keyboard 
in order to bring up this head up display. And here you can see the triangles in your scene. And mine are pretty high with around 100 uh, million triangles. And this is because I have those really small details. And if you don't see this, if this number is too low, let's say, to display those details, you can go into the displacement node here again. So double click the displacement node and scroll down and go uh, and change the triangle size and the maximum number of triangles. So this number is um, multiplied by a million. So I have a maximum triangle number of 100 million. Uh, triangles. All right, and now the last step is to change the diffuse material to a translucent material. So this allows the environment light to go into the material and scatter around inside the material itself. So we are going to change a few settings here. The surface color should be completely white and the subsurface, which is the color which comes through, should be like a mid um, color blue. The texture should be white and the translucency will be at around 1000. If you want, you can also um, ramp up the samples, so the sample number, but I leave it as is. And as we can see here in our preview, this already looks like a snowball. It needs a minute to um, rise up the samples, so I'm rendering on a MacBook, so this will take some time, but this is our finished snowball material. So if you had fun following this tutorial, Leave a comment down below, like it and subscribe for more videos every week. Also follow my Instagram link down below to get previews and updates for new videos. So that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and until next time.